Welcome back to the channel. Gonna be doing working on the Civic again and hopefully getting it all back together, all complete. Uh, in the last video, we were waiting for the intake and exhaust uh, gaskets as well as some other bits and pieces. And now we've got all the parts here, all the parts needed to get it all bolted up and running again. Here's the intake and exhaust is what we needed. So I've also got a new thermostat because most likely may as well change it while I'm here. And then we've got some extras here, parts that came in the kit. So we got valve stem seals as well as a head gasket. So these valve stem seals and head gasket we're not going to be using. But if I get a Y8 head, with, which is a VTEC head, uh, I can then use these parts here and just refurbish the VTEC head. So we've pretty much got everything. We still don't have the timing belt or the water pump so we're still going to be using the old one for now till that arrives so i'm just going to go ahead and start bolting everything back up with the new intake and exhaust gaskets we can put them back on now and and hopefully get the car up and running <laughs> Everything's almost all back together. I just need to get the intake on, so I'm just gonna clean off the old gasket so it has a, the new gasket has a nice seal on it, and then we can go ahead and put it onto the car.
everything completely bolted up, all the wiring's done, and we also changed the injectors in case there were a different injector size, so uh, we don't have any problems there. So we got all the original, and all we have left now is to put the CV axles on, and then bolt up all the suspension back up, and then put new coolant and oil in. And then we just got the one other thing we need to switch ECUs and bypass the immobilizer, which I'll be doing in a bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these CV axles on. engine is completely back together got the alternator belt and the power steering belts on as well uh, put new oil in and coolant so we're pretty much ready to start it I need to switch out the ECU's so put in the D16 ECU rather than having the D14 because the fuel maps will be uh, wrong so so we've got to switch out the ECU luckily they are both OBD 2B so the harness will uh, just they'll bolt up correctly so they both these both have immobilizers so i'm going to have to uh, switch around the immobilizer but for now i'm just going to take the d16 out of the other of the coupe and take the immobilizer chip out of there So we've got the EC inside and we're going to be trying to remove the immobilizer on this board otherwise we won't be able to get the engine to start up. Right so I got the board uh, cover open and this is at the, the top so this here this here chip is the uh, immobilizer chip uh, is which is what we want to remove so first off I want to remove this and then test out if the ECU uh, works or starts without this plugged in it should start but we should have we'll probably have an engine light or, or a, a, the key the green key light on the dash so this is the underside and we just have to find where the chip is placed and we know it is down here I, I already tested just to see if I was able to get the the solder out because I've never done this before but you can see we got one down here that we've got no solder on so we are just got to do that for the rest of them and then just clean it up get rid of all the uh, actual flux so what I'm gonna do while this is heating up for this I'm just gonna put some flux gel on it which will help the solder get absorbed into the into this solder wick and then it just makes it a lot easier for the actual solder points. able to get the chip out here uh, so that's the basically the immobilizer chip so as you can see we've got it out nicely uh, I just cleaned up the area with some IPA as well as the underneath here where it was just to clean off any of the uh, leftover flux I'm just gonna put this back together and we can go ahead and test it out and see if the car will now run
right now the car's not starting um, I'm not quite sure what's the problem so I tried the the D16 ECU without the immobilizer chip it wasn't starting switched out to the D14 and it still wasn't starting so I don't think it's a ECU an ECU problem so I'm just gonna go check over the, all the things check the timing and um, check the we're getting spark and just have a good look around see if there's any grounds that aren't on So I found out what the problem was. There was a few problems actually. So the first half we were um, the spark plugs weren't getting a good spark, so I cleaned them off and I put them back in. So now they're all uh, sparking. I've, I've tested spark, so they're all working. Also with the ECU, the immobilizer issue um, that was actually causing it to not spark. When I took the immobilizer chip out, oh yes, yeah, so the gearbox as well. It actually, I'm pretty sure the input bearing on the gearbox has gone making a loud noise like a big rattly noise but then once you push push the clutch in uh, it goes away so I've got to actually replace the gearbox put switch the gearboxes again from the D6 from this gearbox to the D14 gearbox so for the immobilizer issue uh, we got the both the ECUs here so this is D14 and this is D16 one which we took the immobilizer chip out of so there's actually two versions of this so this is obd 2b both of them are obd 2b and i when i was looking in the forum they said you could just remove the immobilizer chip from the board and it will run except you'll just have a the key light flashing randomly and but it actually doesn't work for i guess the obd 2b uh, ecus you can't just rem remove the chip so Here's where I've got the chip removed. So down here, over here, is where I removed the chip and you actually can't just leave it empty because you'll get no spark, which what happened with me. So we got no spark because there was no immobilizer chip and then that flooded. So what I'm gonna have to do, what you can do is buy a dummy chip. You just sold it then in place where you remove the immobilizer chip and it will run fine. But I don't have the uh, dummy chip and I can only find one from America or China. So, so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is take the immobilizer chip out of this D14 one. And it's an identical chip to this one here. So I'm pretty sure the immobilizer chip, this is going to have the code to my key in the hatch. And so what I'm going to do is take this one out and then put it back in here and then enable the immobilizer to work and be able to use the original key and then we shouldn't have any issues so I'm just going to desolder the pins on this chip take the chip out and then uh, resolder it into this board back on and then we can test it on the car. and now it's running fine and all we have to do now is replace the or switch the gearboxes around so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch out the gearbox just gonna dismantle as much as I can and hopefully able to drop the engine down beneath the 
car and then uh, switch it out with the D14 one. basically just dropped, took, the, took all the bolts out and then dropped it down below and now it's out. So I'm pretty sure it's input shaft or something or there's a bearing on the other side of this uh, as you can hear. It's got that rattle noise or grinding noise. So that's uh, what was causing that loud noise. So since I can't use this I'm going to be Gonna go ahead and remove the gearbox from the D14 and use that one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out and then put it back into this one. together and it's running perfect now but we do have a it is burning a little bit of oil it looks, it looks like the valve stem seals rather than the piston rings because it looks like it burns whenever it's deaccelerating or uh, you just idling for a bit and then when you go uh, accelerate a uh, puff of smoke comes out but then once you're high up in the revs or just driving normally it doesn't seem like there's any uh, burning smoke coming out of the exhaust so I'll probably, when I'm doing the timing belt, I will replace the valve stem seals as well. But that's it, it's pretty much sorted. See? next video of me doing working on this I'll be doing the timing belt replacing the valve stem seals and also I'll probably just probably just uh, do a video of it, me driving it around but yeah that immobilizer issue is sorted and so if you ever want to switch ECUs with OBD 2B uh, you just switch uh, switch the if you have the original chip just put the original chip with the key from that car 
you put into the other ECU and it will run fine. That's about it. Uh, the next video will probably be just doing the time about and just cleaning the car up again. Uh, and then probably take it for a drive and see how it's running. And it definitely feels like a bit more power now. Um, definitely a bit more torque down lower end rather than the D14. But yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.